Today we're going to be doing the following linear algebra question about linear transformations. So we have some linear transformation t that maps from r2022 to r squared, and it's a linear transformation, right? So a transformation really just means a function. You can think of transformation meaning it's just a function. Um, and this notation, when I said that it maps from r2022 to r squared, or r2, that just means that my transformation is a function that takes inputs in 2022 dimensional space, okay? And its outputs are gonna be in two dimensional space. So given some 2022 vector, it's gonna give you back some two vector. Okay, so we've got some linear transformation and we know the following information about that linear transformation. We know that the transformation, if it's given the input E1, Right, and E1 is just the the first standard basis vector of tw of R2022, so it's just the vector, right? E1 is just the vector one with zeros everywhere else all the way down, right? It's a 2022 dimensional vector. So it's saying that T of E1 gives you the two vector four zero, and also T of E1 plus two E2 gives you the vector 10, 6. Okay, so we have two pieces of information about where our linear transformation takes certain specific vectors in R2022. And now the question is asking, what is T of E2? So where will the linear transformation take the vector E2, the second standard basis vector? E2 would be the vector with a 1 in the second entry and zeros everywhere else, right? Okay, so we have some information about our linear transformation and uh, a really important piece of information is the fact that it's uh, linear. So what, is a, what does linear mean? Why do we care? Uh, so we, linearity, we often call the property of, when something's linear, we say it satisfies the property of linearity. That just means, so if we have some linear transformation, that means if it's linear, it's gonna satisfy the following property. So if we have uh, vectors in the input space, right, in the domain of my linear transformation, and C1 and C2 are just real numbers, they're just constants, then if I take um, a linear combination, right, C1 V1 plus C2 V2, this is just some vector in my domain Rn, in our case R2022, I can distribute the linear transformation across sums and across scalar multiplication or multiplication by constant. So I could rewrite this as T of C1 V1 plus T of C2 V2. So this is saying if I add vectors in my input space and then look at where that maps to under T, I could also look at where each of those vectors map to under T and then add their results in my output space. And it's also saying that I can take constants out of a linear transformation. So I could rewrite this as C1 times T of V1 plus C2 times T of V2. So that's what linearity means. It means if you have a linear combination in the input space of your transformation, you could rewrite it. You can distribute the transformation across sums and through scalar multiplication. So here's a little picture that might be uh, that might help you understand. So if I have two vectors in my input space um, and I look at their sum, v1 plus v2, uh, t of v1 plus v2 is right here. But I could also think about where do those, vac those vectors map to under the transformation first. So first bring them into the, the output space, Rm, and then add those result those vectors to get a resulting vector t of v1 plus v2. It's saying I can take two paths to get to the answer. It doesn't matter if I first add in the domain or if I first do the transformation and then add in the range. Okay, so that's linearity. So I'm going to use this property to determine what t of e2 is. If I look at t of e1 plus 2e2, since t is linear, I can rewrite this in a different way. I can rewrite this if I distribute through the addition and the scalar multiplication. If I could rewrite this as t of e1 plus, uh, plus t of 2 times e2. That's me distributing across the addition. 
And then that's also the same thing as t of e1 plus 2 times t of e2. So this is me pulling out the scalar multiple of 2. And I'm allowed to do both of these things because t is linear. Okay, and so now what we want to find is t of e2. So I already have information about what this guy equals from the question, right? And I also have information about what this guy equals. So all I need to do is rearrange for t of e2 and I'll be good. So if I rearrange for t of e2, if I move this term over to the other side, I'll have t of e1 plus 2e2 minus t of e1 equals 2 times t of e2. And then again, I'm rearranging for t of e2, so I want to divide everything by 2. And so I'll get t of e2 is 1 half times t of e1 plus 2e2. This one half is being multiplied by everything. It's t of e1. Right, I've just divided both sides by two or multiplied both sides by one half. Right, and now I know from the question that t of e1 plus 2e2 was the vector 10, 6, right? So I have one half times, well, I'm going to use a round bracket, one half times 10, 6, that's my vector here, and then minus t of e1 was 4, 0, right? So I have the vector 4, 0. And now all I need to do is uh, subtract these vectors. When I subtract vectors, right, I just subtract their components. So I do 10 minus 4 gives me 6, and 6 minus 0 gives me 6. So I have 1, time, one half times the vector 6, 6, and how we deal with scalar times a vector is we multiply that scalar into each component of the vector. So I'll have 1 half times 6 in the first component, which is 3, and then 1 half times 6 again, which is also 3. So I know that t of e2 gives me the vector 3, 3. Yay! So that is how, given this information about my linear transformation, given these two pieces of information, I can figure out where it takes the second basis, standard basis vector of our 2022, of 2022 dimensional space. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you want to, feel free to check out, I have some other videos on linear algebra that might also be helpful. Bye.